Now, um, analysis through technology. This is um, a small part of the biomechanics section that you'll cover in your AS level, um, A level PE. And there's three things you need to know. Obviously, with analysis and technology, there's more than the methods we're going to look at. But the three you need to know about are in this video. And we're going to talk about them briefly. So the first method of um, analysing performance using biomechanics or using technology is limb kinematics. Um, this is a study of movement using motion analysis. You have reflective markers on, on your limbs um, and infrared cameras that track those reflective markers, um, essentially tracking the movement that you're producing. You can see in that picture there um, the markers being applied and some common sports that this might be used in are golf, or football, um, anything with a, a sort of striking element to it. And you can see in this golf picture, in the first one, where the mar markers might be placed. There's, there's often more markers than you would see in that picture. But they're the sort of basic sites um, where the limbs are moving generally. You can see them on the ankle joint, the knee joint, the hip, ankle and, um, and wrist. And essentially it can assess the movement of that individual. And now they might be looking at one specific area. They might be looking at left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg, or the whole, the movement as a whole, or the golf club as a whole. Um, and from the technology available, they can see the speed that each part of your body is, a move, is moving at. Look at the summation of speed, which is important for generating force. And ultimately identify faults within um, a golf swing, for example or a strike of a football. Um, so yeah, that's, that's limb kinematics. Obviously it's good for um, correcting technique and, and improving performance, but disadvantages would be, it's probably not available to, to all of us. It's a specialist um, and expensive way of, 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 of uh, trying to improve or monitoring performance. So that top universities will have it and sports clubs will have it, top teams will have it. But for the everyday sort of um, recreational athlete or even lower level, this probably wouldn't be available to them. But it is a great way of um, trying to improve performance. Limb kinematics. Here's a here's what the the picture might look like on the when it's in its digital form. So this isn't a golfer. This is actually um, an amputee from the army um, where they're trying to um, rehabilitate individuals um, back to, to walking, for example. But this is what the golfer would look like as well. So you can see all the different markers that are on that picture um, and it's converted into this digital image. So you can you can um, sort of break it down and analyze it. Again, some markers on the individual. You can see that this individual is standing on some force plates, which is what we're gonna talk about, I think in the next method. But you can see there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a number of markers on this uh, individual here. So now this moves us on to force plates. Um, and force plates are ways of assessing and measuring ground reaction forces. Um, we know that for every force there is a, a reactive force, one of Newton's laws. Um, and this can be measured using these ground reaction um, force plates. That you could see in that previous picture, you can see them there. That's a force plate that's, that's he's, that he's standing on. So if this individual was to jump, um, it would measure the force um, being applied to it. It can measure sort of directional forces as well. Um, and this is great for, um, or it's usually used for sort of a gait analysis. And the gait analysis is how you would walk or how you would run. Because obviously there's a, a biomechanically efficient way um, to run, which can improve your performance if you're not. If you don't have the correct running technique, it can um, hamper your performance. So by doing this gait analysis, um, it can um, improve your performance. You may have seen something like this in um, sports shops and trainer shops where they will measure your gait or they will get you to walk over a force plate. And once they've assessed where you put your weight with regards to your foot and how you apply your forces, they can prescribe you a particular trainer. Um, based on the way that you that, that you walk which can improve your performance force plates so let's go to some more examples um 
so and this is this is more of a gate analysis this picture so this is I think simply just a, a video camera watching this individual um, on the treadmill and looking at how they um, apply forces with their foot and their running technique just by filming that and slowing it down you might be able to change a few things and improve performance that way here's a force plate in a laboratory setting maybe a university or somewhere and you can see it's quite a long force plate so you could do a number of things on here you might be able to assess a triple jump for example or this or the first two stages of a, of a triple jump um, or obviously if you've got a longer force plate you can run along it and you can you can see those forces over um, a longer time rather than just having that individual plate you can see by the pictures and from the previous um, picture that the force plates are uh, at ground level so they're sunk into the ground they are like the limb kinematics and expensive piece of equipment so again you're only likely to find these these pieces of equipment in um, universities sports science um, centers elite clubs for example um, although doing some research fairly recently I found you can you can get the sort of rollout mats um, that link to your computer and will um, will give you a force reading off that so you can essentially assess the the power or the explosive power of your um, standing jump for example but they're, again they're not they're not super cheap but they're a little bit more affordable but this the real force plate equipment is expensive here it is again um, so again a, a slightly longer force plate and long enough for a right foot left foot stride pattern um, and again your gait can be assessed on this forces can be assessed which direction they're and they're going in for example to make you as efficient as possible okay so they they monitor your your, your movement and your gait lastly wind tunnels um, wind tunnels are used to minimize drag and air resistance um, so these are used for sort of sports like um, formula one um, cycling um, anything where you might encounter some sort of wind uh, resistance drag against you that can be minimized once you assess it I think McLaren have got a 140-145 meter wind tunnel um, and they, they put millions of pounds into working out how they can reduce drag on a car um, because it can increase we can decrease um, the, the, the overall times and it can improve performance I think they managed to increase or decrease drag by 7% or something like that which doesn't sound like a lot but in the grand scheme of things when Formula 1 milliseconds count that could be the difference between winning and losing and obviously you know how much money is involved in Formula 1 so um, yeah wind tunnels so look at some pictures we've got I think this is one of the original wind tunnels developed by NASA in the 1920s um, and originally they used for um, sort of aeroplanes trying to reduce the drag on aeroplanes to try and reduce the, the fuel that it needs etc um, here's another mock-up of an aeroplane um, in, a, in a wind tunnel and this is what we're really concerned about within sports science um, and the use of wind tunnels um, cycling and you can see um, in the smaller picture the sort of the the air resistance going over that athlete and the reduction of drag by um, reducing the cross-sectional area um, or the frontal cross-sectional area of, of that racer um, and the, use, the way that the air goes over the helmet as well so by using these wind tunnels we can find the most efficient position um, in terms of reducing drag for the cyclist to be in um, and therefore improve performance but again expensive piece of equipment not likely to have one at your school in your house um, you're gonna find these in um, elite centers in universities um, so they are a bit elitist like like all the, the equipment that we've just spoke about the methods we spoke about but um, yeah they're the three things you need to know about for a level PE so limb kinematics um, force plates force platforms and wind tunnels yeah three ways of um, analyzing performance using biomechanical processes and trying to improve performance the next video will have some questions in it um, that you can have a go answering and then we'll 
we'll go through some answers at the end. Okay, take care.